We have all have had the time with Christians or with a message or a Sunday school lesson where we have been approached or we have been preached to. And it's been about a sin that we are guilty with. And there are reactions. I mean, when you come up and if you were to step on someone's bare foot, right away it would be, ow! And then as the pain fades, you realize it was an accident. But ow! Sometimes that reaction would be somebody really gets upset. Some that reaction may be they go away. And there are different reactions from people by different results of being stepped on. As I call that when a message, somebody has approached you about your sin, how are you going to react? I've had one person that was falsely teaching lessons in Sunday school and Oh, that's what men, that's what men say. I had one man, he wanted to bring something to the church, and I said, listen, this is evil, this is wicked. And he goes and changes the Bible into the Hebrew and falsifies the scriptures because he wants to do that and gets angry. And I had one time where I was collecting trick, trick tracks. And I didn't know what they were really. But I thought they were some kind of Christian collectible cards. And I was collecting. I was trying to get all the numbers, all the, all the, the titles. And a man came up to me and said, Styley, that's and explain to me what tracks were. Now I thank God for that man because I don't know what year that was. I was saved in 1987. Still to this day, 2024, this year, I put two gospel tracks out today. I didn't get mad at the guy. I listened to him. Now there have been other times when somebody's approached me. I've gotten mad. There's times I, I walked out of the church with the message. And my wife has told me, uh, what are you so mad about? <laughs> then I got to get in a prayer meeting with the Lord. But we're going to look at a couple people in the Bible. And they had the same thing. They had a sin. And they were approached. And let's look at their reactions. David, the first one in 2 Samuel 12, he's just committed adultery with Bathsheba. And it says after Nathan has approached David of what the Lord told him. It says in verse 7, Nathan said to David, Nathan is a prophet. David is a king. Thou art the man. Now, Nathan gives this whole parable about two men and a lamb and a sheep. How this rich man came and stole the poor man's sheep and David gets furious. And David quotes the law and says, He will restore the land fourfold. 
Nathan says to David the king, Thou art the man. Now as a king, David could have said, Take that man's neck off. John the Baptist. Don't want to hear it. Keep him in jail. Paul. I think that was Felix. In the book of Acts. Thou art the man. And it's quite weird that verse 13 is the reaction. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. That's the proper reaction. I did it. I was doing it. I knew I was doing it. I, I, hey, I listen, I didn't know. I'm sorry. You know, you tell somebody, uh, you got um, a little ketchup on your face. Oh, okay. Well, how dare you? Um, let me go, Jerry, you're sitting in my seat, which is wrong, but you're sitting in my seat. And you, you know. Uh, Fred, you know that Bible you're reading? Because I've de dealt with many people reading not the King James Bible. You know that Bible you're reading? Don't you tell me. It's the best Bible. It's the only Bible. I'm not. And then, you know, okay. And I have some people, they sit down with me and they say, show me. Or it's easy to read. I'm not going to change. Okay, well. Listen, I ain't going to force you. But if, if you're doing a kind of wrong, I'm going to say something. And I've had pastor and Christians upset because I have gone into their lives and stepped on their... It's amazing how many feet of pastors I've stepped on that I've reacted in the wrong way. But when they step on the feet of the congregation, oh, you know, they don't like what I say about the church, but it's true. But David's reaction was repentance. Absolute repentance. And he didn't get mad. Now he could have. Now John chapter 4. We have verse 15. This is the woman at the well. And Jesus. Okay. And it says in verse 16, Jesus said to her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast five husbands, and, the, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that thou sayest truly. All right, so Jesus, Nathan says, thou art the man. Actually, as you notice how they're, they're both adultery. <laughs> that funny? Jesus says to this woman, okay, go get your husband. He goes, I ain't got no husband. He goes, listen, lady, you had five husbands, and the one you're with right now is not your husband. In other words, <coughs> excuse me, fornication or adultery. Now, what's her reaction? The woman said unto him, I, Sir, I perceive that thou art prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and they say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. What's her reaction? As David's reaction was repentance, this woman changes the subject. She gets religious. Well, you know, the Jews say Jerusalem. We say this, this mountain. We take a pilgrimage to the, you know, there are religions out there, they take pilgrimages. But the salvation is when you tell them is of Jesus Christ. You're a sinner. You need to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I had one person tell me one time, well, my priest prays for me. 
that ain't going to do you nothing. I had a homeless man tell me one time, well, uh, you know, at, at the food, at, at the uh, place where I get food, the nun blesses him. She ain't going to do nothing. Mary ain't going to do nothing. Allah ain't going to do nothing for you. It's by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there are people that you will deal with, you will talk with them. Well, I've always done it that way. I don't want to change. You do it your way, I do it my way. You know, that's the Baptist saying, this is our religious thing. We're, and, you know, that's, that's a reaction. They get religious. They change the subject. And when I, a street preacher, people say, well, our church don't do that. My pastor wouldn't do that. Well, okay, well, I've been in Baptist churches where they don't like, they, they can't stand up the street preacher. And it's like, listen, that's Bible. You realize Peter, James, and John, and Jesus, Noah, Preached on the streets. I mean, there are wrong street preachers out there. But not all of us are wrong. So, David repented. This woman changes the subject to a religious and then, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with somebody like this woman, you're just going to go on and on in a battle. It's going to get nowhere. And it's like, you, you get to the point, you told them, let's say if it's a modern Bible, I know this one, I dealt with people. Well, you know, and you show them the passages in the Bible, their Bible and, and the King James. Uh, I'm going to keep my Bible. Okay, well, you know what you did is you showed them. If you happen to have a track, you can give it to them. Then go on. Okay? You don't want to sit there and, and, and battle an entire conversation and waste time. All you can do is tell them. John chapter 8. Verse 7. This is a woman taken in adultery. <laughs> okay? And they brought him to brought her to Jesus. The religious people, they brought her to Jesus. And they expect Jesus to say stoner, but you know, Jesus. He he, he, he has people repent. He has he, he's not, you know, executionist. And when they continue, verse 7, asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto him, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Well, that's what the law was. You stone him. And I've seen that verse used so many times by Christians. And the thing that the person's done wrong is not worthy of being stoned. The devil. Adultery in the Bible was you were to be stoned. You, the adulterer, and the adulteress. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 10 When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none, but the woman said unto him, I mean, and he said unto her, Woman, where are the thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. So what happens was, Jesus had cast the first stone. He, he stoops down the ground and starts writing again. We don't know what he wrote. And the conscience of these men, beginning at the eldest, the oldest man there, they take off and leave. David repents. The woman at the well, 
gets religious. These men, out of here, were gone. Now they had a conviction, but they don't stick around. And you'll find this in any public ministry. You'll find somebody, you know, you'll be talking to them, witnessing to them, and they get a conviction and, you know, they close the door. They keep on going. They don't have the time. You have a Christian, you, you, you come up and deal with it, and they, you know, I don't have the time for this. We'll talk another time, okay? So you can repent. You can get religious. Or you can say, I'm out of here. I don't even want to go any further with this conversation, okay? It's weird how it does it like that. Acts. The book of Acts. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Verse 7. This is Paul. And what happened is Jesus has shown up. They're on the road to Damascus. Verse 4. Jesus approaches Paul with a light. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, that's, that's later Paul, why persecute us out of me? There's a sin. All right, you have a sin where you, you committed adultery with Bathsheba. You have a sin where you have got five husbands. This woman was caught in adultery. This man is killing and putting in prison Christians. And Jesus takes it personally. You know, keep your hands and your mouth and your thoughts off Jerusalem and Israel. Don't mess with Israel. Don't curse Israel. Keep your hands, keep your thoughts off the Christian. Because Jesus keeps it personally too. When you persecute a Christian, you're persecuting Jesus, he said. Why persecute thou me? Saul ain't persecuting Jesus. He's persecuting the early church. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. So, Paul's charge was you're persecuting him. Christians. And the reaction was, and he trembling and stunned said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. And then the Lord speaks to Ananias. And then you see verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered to the house and put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way that thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And it also says, verse 11, about Paul, or Saul, Arise and go in the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Paul, or Saul, he says in verse 17, Brother Saul, Paul repented got in a prayer meeting with God, was praying to Jesus, and he never, ever persecuted anybody else after this. 
Matter of fact, he's called in the ministry. He gets on preaching about Christ. And there are books in the New Testament written by him for the church. So Paul got saved. David repented. The woman at the well got religious. The men that brought the woman in adultery skedaddled. Saul repented and got saved and went into the ministry. Now, Matthew 18. Verse 15. Here we go. Here it is. Moreover, if thy brother, saved, shall trespass against thee, he's done you some kind of wrong. He's done a wrong. And I've had people in church where their ideas, their thoughts, their doings was not right. I had somebody who wanted to bring something to church and it's a sin and I, I didn't want to have anything to do with that. I didn't want one of my senses or two of my senses to even be involved with that. And I spoke up, like the Bible says, between him and me. More of a brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Don't get a committee. Don't get an armed group of men. Don't go choosing sides. It is you, not the pastor. You and him alone. I've had a pastor come up to me. Well, you know, this family don't like what you're doing, or this guy doesn't like you. I said, Pastor, he's what? Why are you talking to me? Well, this guy talked to me. He told me. I said, where is he? Who is he? Well, I don't want to give his name. I said, Pastor, you violated the scriptures. What do you mean? You should tell that guy, that person, to go talk to Styler yourself. Matthew 18. Well, no, there is no well about it. And if your pastor is not going to follow the scriptures, there is a fault. Somebody went to the pastor and, and told the fault that I told the fault. Well, the pastor, said, pastor should have said, listen, I'm not going to deal with it. You go talk to him. So there is complete, utter rebellion against the scriptures. Because the pastor should have told that person, well, you got to beef with Stiley, you go talk to Stiley. There's an order found in Matthew 18. And believe it or not, many pastors will not follow what the scripture says. And brother, if you're not going to follow the scripture, how's your congregation going to follow the scripture? Yes, I told pastors that. Then they get mad at me. I tell you, the worst person to preach to is a pastor. Almost like they can dish it out, but many can't take it. So you got a beef. With somebody, something they have done. You go to that person alone. And you tell him. And if he shall hear thee, he listens to you, to you thou hast gained a, thy brother. And you know, listen, he listens to you. He says, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Can we talk about it a little more? Can you can you help me? Maybe me thinking about it. Can we and you know what? It, 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 it gets things right. Rob Benner going, you know, to the pastor, got bringing in a, you know, a boxy and all that other stuff. You want somebody who's going to do right. 
So, that's that. Now what? But if he will not hear thee, then take with him two, excuse me, take with him one or two more. You, another person, or two more people, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. All right, then you bring somebody, say, listen, I'm going to talk to this person. They're doing this. I've already been one-on-one -on -one with them, talking to them, but they won't listen. Can you go with me? Can you help me on this matter? All right, nobody else knows. Three people, including you, know. And then you're going to bring the fourth person, the, the person who who's doing the fall. Okay? So, there are five people involved. The doer, the talker, and two or three witnesses. And if he shall neglect to hear them, he won't listen at all. Tell it unto the church. Then you go to, then you bring it before the church. Not the pastor, the church. The people. But if he neglect to hear the church, he won't listen. Let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Okay? So, what happens is when a person won't listen and he is truly at fault, Matthew 18, And you've gone to them alone. You've gone to them with witnesses. And you've gone before the church. Then he is a publican, which is a, was a bad person then. A heathen, that's a dead dog, pig person, Gentile. And Matthew 18 is for the Jews. Your attitude. If you are guilty of what is brought to you. The proper attitude of Paul or Saul and Peter repent and get it right with God. Now you say somebody brings something to you and it's really not so. Okay, deal with it together in an honest, lovable, charity, wise fashion. Because maybe there's just a misunderstanding between two or between one. And make sure you have the word of God. Make sure there has been prayer and more prayer and more prayer and more prayer. To get right. Not only with the brethren, the brother. But be right before God. In most cases. Where the fight and attitude comes. It's pride. You stepped on my toes. And I had to have been infected. So I am in great dear pain. In the most cases, when somebody will come up to you and, and, and they bring something that is at fault, they're doing it because they love you. Or they're doing it because it's irritating them. And they don't want the irritation. And it might be good. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, it could be, you know what, every week you tap into the, 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 the pew. And you know, it just vibrating and all that. And I mean, the other person could get up and go. Maybe, maybe they sit in that pew for a reason. I don't know. All kinds of different things, all kinds of different problems. 
A lot of times, I mean, if you can avoid it, but move into another sea or something like that, move to another sea. But if somebody comes up to you, I just gave you the reaction. Repentance, get religious, I'm out of here. They repented. And if they don't listen, they won't listen. And they're still guilty. They're not too too well standing with the Lord. 